and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, affectionately known throughout the United States for over 30 years, if you can believe that, as the money lady. And of course, if you are a faithful viewer, and I do have thousands of you, I appreciate your faithfulness and your loyalty, by the way. You know my commitment to financial empowerment, to education, to helping you and your families live a quality of life that is just marvelous. But you can't do it if you're not aware. Being in a dream state means that you're not awake. <laughs> and I want you to be awake so that you can begin to make the sound decisions for you and your family that will be prospering and empowering. And today's segment is no um, exception. Uh, I have as my guest for the next hour a gentleman that I had on several years ago talking about water. And of course, water then and water today are just two different things. He shared some insightful information about this and it allowed uh, me to get an understanding and to make some major decisions in my own life. Uh, I'm having him back today to bring me current, particularly in lieu of water now being on the radar for most citizens in this country. It's not a new problem, but it is a serious problem. Flint and other municipalities uh, are dealing with this issue. So again, uh, without further ado, I'm going to reintroduce you to a previous guest who is going to bring me up to date over the last two years as to the water crisis, the quality of water, uh, what you drink is really what you are, and uh, I'm just delighted to be able to share this time with him and allow you to watch it and learn some things. So without further ado, I introduce to you Tomas Engelhardt. And how are you, sir? <laughs> great, Michelle. I'm doing great. Thank I you. want to say how delighted I am to have you back on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having I, me. Oh, it's always a delight. And I wanted you, let's begin by you giving your story. Great, yeah, well, um, well, kind of, I can begin by how I got into the water business. Yes, um, that would be helpful. I'm an architect by trade. Uh, you I, build things. Yes, I mm -hmm. build things. So I, I was very connected. I've traveled quite a bit to the with architecture and uh, when I was in the university um, around the American Southwest. So water was on my radar to a mm -hmm. certain extent. Um, when I was at coffee shops and reading papers and things mm -hmm. like that, uh, it was very much uh, a part of my daily uh, life. Okay. by uh, by having that so so you know I started out in architecture uh, I knew that you know in a building you need water uh, you need certain aspects of a building to make it live and mm -hmm. be alive uh, for us to live in and so water was one of those very important necessities that uh, that we need in a house uh, so I knew it was important but you know of course every day when you're living with water you sort of take it for granted. Yeah, you take it for granted, you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just not as much, um, you know, in our thoughts, even though we consume it every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I got jettisoned out of the architectural field in 08, um, much like many people did in their career path. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just decided to go into hospitality industry um, and to survive. I, I did that for a few years, uh, knew that that was not where I wanted to be. Um, and just long term, you know, it's, it's a perfect fine career for many people um, and uh, and I did well with it I enjoyed mm -hmm. the people I love people so uh, and and then you know I came across a guy who was talking about water at a happy hour event one time and huh. and he just just as a pause yes you never know what you're gonna run into at happy hours networking That's, don't turn your nose up on it yeah it's unbelievable so you know mm -hmm. I mean everyone did laugh uh, okay it was funny you know when people bring up water and or water and you know many people give it get a chuckle and get a laugh okay. out of that um, and you know it, it, it just was one of those things where uh, you know I also chuckled but I was really like hmm you know I'm intrigued here so I listened to the presentation took the guy's information and um, and he was from LA so obviously as we know LA has very serious water issues yes they do um, and like many other cities I was just out in Vegas and and they have serious water issues yes they do uh, just look at Lake Mead and you'll you'll be able to yes they do you'll be able to see real quick uh, go Google map that <laughs> right. uh, Google Earth that and you'll be able to see yourself yes. but um, very very incredible just all these 
uh, things kind of coming up upon my radar. And so I started looking into it more. And um, you know, as I was doing the research on the water, I was just noticing all kinds of things with, mm -hmm. with respect to municipalities and um, well water and, and mm -hmm. groundwater and rainwater and all these different aspects of it. Um, but, and then also, you know, the specific water that I was researching was something that was a little bit more off the beaten path and more along the uh, health and wellness and medical lines uh, of water. And so we all think that, you know, water is healthy, right? So all water is healthy. All water must be healthy. Right. Put um, a question mark by that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, coming from, you know, we're sitting here in Ohio, which mm -hmm. in the Ohio River Valley, uh, uh -huh. the Ohio <laughs> Waterway is the number one most polluted waterway in the last seven to eight years so um, you know and that's consider where you're getting your drinking water from so uh, mm. and so we have to filter that and is that quite because be before interrupting you because yeah, this no is worries. good is the Ohio River waterway the most polluted waterway because of where it begins with the Allegheny there are three I mean two water uh, water rivers aren't there yeah I mean you know one could argue probably that you know the Mississippi River is mm -hmm. probably uh, you know, I mean, it's got all of the rivers, the Missouri yes, and all yes, of them everybody going into them, right? So, um, you know, but however, uh, the Ohio itself has so much more industry. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, coming down from Pittsburgh and, mm -hmm. uh, and upstream uh, from uh, Cincinnati where uh, I reside. But, you know, I will say this, that as water travels yeah. uh, down, you know, through earth and through streams and underground water streams, you know, it is getting purified by the earth. Mm -hmm. So the earth will take on those impurities and the plants will suck up those impurities. Yes, and we and, will eat the plants. And yeah, <laughs> hopefully not uh, those plants, but uh, you know, um, what, you know, with the chemicals in okay. it, but there are many, quite a few plants that you can put on the banks and things that can, uh, reeded plants mm -hmm. and bamboos and things like that, that can really suck up contaminants uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit and prevent erosion. So, you know, there are great ways to do that. but. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, consider your source, you know, everyone believes that water is just water. And, um, you know, I, I hear it all the time, you know, and I, I say, okay, great. Well, you know, go get you a drink from the Ohio River mm -hmm. or whatever local waterway uh -huh. that you have there mm -hmm. and, and see what happens. You know, hopefully you don't get any kind of bacterial thing going on or, or any kind of parasitic thing or, you know, there's lots of things that viruses, mm -hmm. you know. And that, the water. That are just in the water, you know, mm -hmm. that you can't see. Uh, and even, you know, across the board, when we look at clear waters, they all look the same. But then mm -hmm. when you get down on a pH level and you start testing them or, or um, on an electrical level and start testing them, they're all different. Mm -hmm. so, well, I want to talk about that as well. So you got your awareness around water quality was triggered through this interface with this gentleman from Los Angeles. That's it. Changed yeah. your world. Was that your epiphany? That was, you know, it was the it was the beginning of much more to come, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I when I met this guy, you know, it was kind of just the catalyst of, uh, hey, this is this is of interest, you know, and mm -hmm. um, because of, like I said, my past and my travels and things like that, and I've been to all over the world, so mm -hmm. you know, uh, water is, you know, um, bad everywhere. It, it surely is. So. It surely is. I lived in China. Trust me, that's scary. Yeah, you know, and, ah. and, yeah, the water is everywhere, you know, but there's a small percentage of, of fresh water on the planet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I mean, in California, they're talking about desalinization now mm -hmm. and things like that. And, you know, that's all good and great. However, um, you're losing a lot of minerals that the body needs in the mm -hmm. water um, when they're going through the uh, distillation process and stuff. Um, and, um, you know, well, explain that to my potable. viewers what that is when you talk about desalinization. Well, what desalinization is, is basically going to, uh, well, you can't have that, imu that much salt or sodium in the water. Uh, it's just too much for our body to take, although our bodies do need salt, mm -hmm. um, you know, for our body to survive and the electro, uh, you know, this. Yeah, electrolytes. Yeah, mm -hmm. the electrolytes and all the neurotransmissions to flow right. through our body accurately, you know, so we have motor function. However, um, you know, the desalinization is going to create a water that uh, they have them on na naval ships. I have, I have friends in the, in the Navy mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, when you're out there in the middle of nowhere, you're desalinizing the water. So. so they take ocean water and process it. That's right. They process it. And, you know, although I don't know all the scientific mm -hmm. uh, background of how desalinization works, uh, I know what type of water that it's mm -hmm. creating in terms of an acidic water that is, mm. um, that is uh, null and void of all the minerals and nutrients mm -hmm. that we need. because. What happens is when water flows down from when it rains on a mountaintop right. or something of that lines, 
it flows down and it collects the geology and the minerals from the geology mm -hmm. um, and the salts and things like that. And water is a liquid mineral. So uh, you want your water to have those minerals in it uh, if you're consuming it right. for yourself. Um, and so uh, we need those minerals. They're very uh, vital to our body, bones, um, uh, elasticity of our muscles, so mm -hmm, on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So so back to this desalinization thing, which yeah. is emerging as a technology uh, for water-starved municipalities, maybe coastal. Sure. Yeah, coastal areas where they have a vast ocean. But again, with that process, there it's stripped of all of its um, healing properties. Yes. Well, at the point you have no minerals, you have nothing but just a liquid. Yes. Uh, I mean, granted, the body does need to be hydrated because we are primarily water, yes. right? Yes. But at the point you're ingesting a liquid that is devoid of all of the natural attributes that the body needs, is that an answer? Unfortunately, uh, that that is the that that's is the, the answer. That's the that's the that's the answer. That's the current answer at the moment, I believe. You know, and um, Jeez, you know, fortunately, I don't I don't I don't live uh, you know on a, on a coastal area, so you I know, don't think I we're, will. We're fortunate, you know. We mm -hmm. just got quite a bit of rain, and, and you know, some would be upset that it flooded things, but no. you know, uh, we are lucky that we do have rain, and um, yeah, in, in the Ohio River Valley, and. Uh, in the east here, and, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's really nice, um, and I kind of revel in it. I, I love it, um, mm -hmm. but you know that's because I'm so connected. I think to water. I, that yeah, I think you are. That's I have what a it, newfound love of. So it. my question, because I do have a, a friend of mine um, who has kind of put his life on the line uh, in this whole water genre, and he is into deep well drilling, uh -huh. where he goes deep into the the land and he said that California is not um, famine ridden they just don't want to drill deep wells to tap into the water yeah yeah you know said uh, the politics are just convoluted it is and, and you know there there are probably two sides to, to mm -hmm. that argument yep. uh, which I'm not uh, privy to per mm -hmm. se um, but you know, just just give him the opinion maybe on, on why it might not be is simply you know um, they have a lot of erosion issues oh, as it is I think okay. in California mm -hmm. um, the ground might not be as stable for mm -hmm, that kind of drilling mm -hmm. and maybe on a large and, mass basis it's possible uh, mm -hmm. you know so. Uh, if you drill, you might f create sinkholes and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I know that the geology here in this part of the country is much more stable. You know, mm -hmm. hard stone rock yeah. um, and uh, granites, things mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. real, real hard. So, you know, when you drill, it's like creating a, you know, in, uh, a hole in your countertop, you know, <laughs> where okay. it stays there yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, it's not and going water. to. Yeah. That's right. And so you can drill more easily, I believe, in this type of uh part of the country than, than maybe that part. Okay, because um, I do know idea. also in Africa uh, that deep well technology uh, is taking hold, but it's been so uh, politically charged and uh, just everything and um, expensive and they don't have the money, but Africa truly should not be experiencing a drought because 40 feet down is plenty of fresh water. I have it, heard. I've it, heard it that. It is true. I've I've seen it, and it's yeah. amazing. But again, because of the politics, everything is political. Everything, how resources get sure. allocated, who pays for what. But that is a real, real, real uh, possibility as things move along. Because again, that's a food basket. That's where the soil has not been polluted. Yeah. The poverty has kept them from engaging in all of the things that have happened over here in terms of over fertilizing, uh, the uh, corrupt fertilizers. And so our soil over here is sick versus over there where they have excellent soil. It's dry, but it's excellent and they just need water. So we'll see how that rolls out. Well, and you actually bring up a good point uh, with fertilizers and things like that in terms of water quality. Yes. Um, I was just up in Columbus. I do quite a bit of business in Columbus. 
And, um, you know, they had some times where I was up there where you should not drink the municipal water Whoa, because okay. of the fertilizers and mm -hmm. the runoff, runoff from, the, from farm. the farms. Yeah. Well, Columbus so is a farming. High nitrates. Yeah, mm -hmm. farming area. It really is. Yeah. Well, you know, you got Cincinnati where we live, and, and I'm going to tell you, I don't touch the water. I don't care how many notices they send in, in the mail yeah. saying the water is fine. And I'm like, uh, if memory serves me correct, we have one of the largest concentrations of chemical companies in the United States. Yep. And many of them are perched on that river. They are upstream. Upstream. Yep. Upstream. And then I said, um, we have had the issue of radioactivity from phrenol, which people seem to have a memory lapse. Uh, that radioactivity and the isotopes from that don't dissipate in the water quickly. So you got uh, that going on. And so this is why <laughs> I wanted you on again because many people were not aware of what is and has occurred and what can we do as individuals first uh, to begin to alter or change our lifestyles so that we can survive. You changed my world. I'll be candid with it. I, I, I don't drink the same kind of water as other people sure, drink, sure. and I don't do bottled water. Why don't you talk about bottled water and plastic water? Yeah, I mean, you know, simply, um, and these are all things that I didn't know before I knew them, you know, and, uh, and tested them for myself, mm -hmm. you know, which, which not as many people are doing these days, you know. Um, but some are starting to get, you know, pick up that uh, ball and run with it. But, uh, you know, really it's just about awareness. So when I started doing research on bottled waters, you know, I, I started finding things like, I mean, there's a great documentary uh, that you can get on Netflix or somewhere out there, maybe mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, called TAP, T-A-P-P-E-D, TAPED. Okay, um, T-A-P-P-E-D. Yeah, and you know, that's just a documentary that you can watch that's about the bottled water industry, actually. Um, so it turns out that the bottled waters, most bottled waters that are, you know, called anything glacier water, spring mm -hmm. water, this water, mm -hmm. that water, that water whatever. Uh, whatever they're calling them, you know, for, for marketing purposes, mostly uh, the water is just a filtered water of some sort, and in most cases, it's reverse osmosis or distilled water. Um, which is again null and void of those minerals that mm -hmm. the body needs. So, um, you know, when you test them, they're going to turn out to be more acidic uh, on a pH level. Um, when our body, in fact, and our blood is needs to be about 7.365, slightly alkaline. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we're born, and that's where our blood remains. Now, all the rest of the organs and stuff in our body have different pHs and need to be different pH pHs. But uh, considering that your blood is about 90% water. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the water is very important uh, that it has a nutrient uh, density in it and then also that it can allow for your blood cells to flow freely. Uh, it's a solvent. Um, so That is interesting. You call it a solvent. Also, I was going to say on this issue of bottled water, which I, which I never paid attention to because 20 years ago my uh, claim to fame is, I don't drink that water, I drink bottled water. Sure. And then I discovered the bottled water may be sitting in a warehouse for, oh, oh my God, yeah. it's not fresh yeah, water. Unfortunately, so that's another thing. Okay. Um, so, you know, when, when water is, is rained down uh, naturally, uh, you know, it has the process that it goes through the geology, mm -hmm. through our streams, down the mountainside, et cetera, over waterfalls. You know, the, these are the kind of things that, that create living water. Okay, okay, that's important, living water. Living water, right? Okay. And we want a living body. So mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, the, that's one of the things that bottled water unfortunately doesn't have is it's not as, because of the you know, production, distribution, mm -hmm. and storage of the liquid before um, they need to deliver it. Uh, I've seen pictures of big <laughs> uh, packs of bottled waters on tarmacs getting you know beat down by the sun and, yes. and, and light and, and movement will break down the property of that mm -hmm. liquid and so uh, and temperature can also do it as well that's okay. why we heat up water to make tea because it breaks it apart um, but but in the terms of you know if it's sitting in a storage uh, on average they say it's about it takes that bottle of water after they fill it uh, at one of the stations mm -hmm. about uh, a year to two years, six months to two years to get to you. So it um, is definitely not 
alive. It's not as live, alive as it once was. Right. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it definitely not. Um, you know, it's no different than a piece of produce when you pick it off of the tree or uh -huh. the bush, right? It's right there. Right. You know, that's fresh, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the longer that you take it away, what happens to that piece of produce? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it begins to decompose. Right. So water is no different. Water is alive and it dies. We're alive and then we die. So mm. there's a life process and cycle to every thing that's out there and and the key is is why we want everything that we consume to be alive uh, including our water very much alive is we want that to be enzymatic we want that to uh, allow to be a solvent to clean out our digestive tract mm -hmm. uh, and, and really cleanse and push things out you know what Tomas this is what I struggle with so badly because it is a miracle that most people even alive. <laughs> I mean, think about Our it. bodies are resilient. Yes. The body is resilient, but boy, oh boy, when you start rolling into your 50s, it will catch up to you. It's going to catch up with you, and you're going to look like a hot mess. Or feel. Or like a hot feel mess. like a hot <laughs> mess and not know why. And I think you bring up just a, a takeaway for me today before we get into the issue of acidity and alkalinity, because that is it, and that's everything. Yeah. That's everything. But the takeaway is that water, you want living water, yes. because we are living organisms, and the water acts as a solvent to wash and clean our body and our organs and our blood. Yep. So, and since we are pre predominantly water, it's essential that we have living water, correct? Oh, absolutely. Is that a proper uh, yeah. uh, assertion? If that be the case, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's talk about your thing, which is alkaline versus acidic, and give us some foundation here. Yeah, so, you know, that, that kind of started out. Again, I didn't know much about the subject. It's something that we learn very early on in elementary school, mm -hmm. uh, early education. And then, you know, you do a little bit with it and then that's it, you mm -hmm. know, uh, you're done with it. So, um, you know, so when I rediscovered it, um, you know, I thought, wow, you know, we test pools for pH, mm -hmm. we test fish tanks for pH. Uh, and if you have uh, any, any one of you have a uh, saltwater fish tank at home, you know that uh, you have to be really up on it uh, or you can lose thousands of dollars worth of fish, uh, fish and coral and mm -hmm. things like this um, because the pH is not correct. And that's with salt. Um, that's even more. So, you know, if, uh, I always tell someone because, you know, a lot of drinks, if you go into a supermarket shelf and I'm not going to single any out, they're all the same. You go down and you pull out every bottle and you test all of them. The majority of those liquids are going to be very, very acidic. So if you took any one of those liquids, took a saltwater fish tank like our body, and you pour them into the fish tank, it's going to kill thousands of dollars worth of sea life. So, um, which is exactly what it's doing to the inside of our body. Wow. And so, you know. And I, that's because it's acidic. Very acidic, yeah. And oftentimes, you know, they're, they're, you know, a lot of the drinks are filled with sugars. You know, high sugar means sugar turns to acid, oh. acid turns to sickness. So, mm -hmm. you know, basically, um, you know, when you have high levels of sugar in these sports drinks, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, energy drinks, sodas, sugar. all sugar. sugar. I mean, you know, you just have to look at the back and, I, and you know, see how and much I don't mean to get sidetracked off that because no I really, um, I came up under extreme uh, criticism because. I said, and I'll say it again, sports drinks are, I don't care how athletic you are, there's no way you can ingest tons of sugar in the form of high fructose syrup into a yeah. human body and, and have it going on because sugar is acid and acid is food for cancer. Yeah, That's documented, that's evidenced. Yeah. So why do we uh, drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak, and, and believe tastes something. Good. I know it tastes good. It's highly addictive, too. <laughs> I mean, very... my God. I mean, you can become a sugar addict just like that in America. But back to this acid. The, bo the human body cannot tolerate acid over That's... time. 
That's right. And I'll just give a, a quick brief uh, okay. thing. You know, if you take, I mean, you could do this at home. I saw this on YouTube. Okay. Uh, where, you know, just to kind of uh, put it into play here, if you have a uh, drink, a soda, for example, or anything mm -hmm. that has high levels of sugar in it, and, and you put it into a pot and you heat it up to 98.6 degrees, okay. which is our body temperature, and you just look to see, I mean, this is how they create candy, right? Oh my gosh. Caramel and things okay. like that. So it becomes viscous and, you know, hardened, right? Water? Uh, no, actually anything with sugar in oh, it. Oh, anything with sugar. Okay, yeah, so, so you so, put it, okay. So if you put like a soda, for example, into a, 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 you know, a, a pot and heat it up to 98.6 mm -hmm. degrees, it's going to become viscous. And when you're drinking that and your body is 98 point degrees. You're gonna cook yourself. What do you think's happening inside your body? Your blood is now becoming viscous. Mm -hmm. So we wonder why we, you know, we can't heal quick enough. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason is, is, you know, if, if our blood was like a highway, a super highway, mm -hmm. and I'll get back to that acidity in a moment, um, then your blood needs to travel freely, right? We, we don't all wanna sit in a, in a standstill on no, the highway, no. right? You know, well, nor do our white blood cells. Okay, mm -hmm. so our white blood cells want to be moving as fastly, you know, swiftly mm -hmm, as possible mm -hmm. throughout our body to repair. Right. And if they're held up by the viscous red blood cells that are null and void of the things that they need, then, um, and, and their electrical charge is that where they're clumping together, then, you know, nothing is getting through there. And so that's what creates disease because your disease can uh, propagate throughout your body mm -hmm. and your white blood cells cannot get there to help. So in acidity, in terms of um, any acidic waste that you have in your body, obviously we want that to be out. That's, that's through number one and number two, right? So that's how we eliminate. And uh, if we're not eliminating acidic waste out of our body properly, that's what builds up in our body and creates aches and pains and mm. then becomes, you know, d diseases like arthritis, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and that's so on and so forth. That's yeah. just the inflammation that acidity in your body creates. My gosh. Yeah. That, that's powerful. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, no, really. Yeah, yeah. Is, is this, may I just ask, is it reversible? It is. See, that's the thing. You know, at any point in time, you're never too far down the line. Now, you might be sick and you might be on X amount of medications. You might be having all these issues in your mm -hmm. life, but it's never too late to change. Now, our cells, I think it's something like every uh, 700 plus days or something, maybe it's like seven mm -hmm. months. Um, it's one of those seven numbers. Mm -hmm. I, I remember reading it and I just can't put my finger on it at the moment. But, you know, literally over X amount of time period, your cells completely regenerate. Now that's only if you're giving them the right things to regenerate. Mm -hmm. Now if you're just regenerating something bad, then it's just something bad that's recycling mm -hmm. in there and you can never get it out. Mm -hmm. So, and that's going back to what water is at its foundation, which is a solvent, and it, it, and it cleanses and flushes mm. and, and gets things out. No different than it cuts through rock, stone, right, steel, right, whatever you right, put in its right, way, right? right. So um, that's that is what's so powerful. Do. It's amazing. You I know? mean, that is something that we take so for granted, but it is so essential to our health and our well-being. Well, and that's exactly brings me back to the point of you know all the liquids that we have out here in the market are unfortunately all very acidic. So mm. you get into the supermarket and you start walking around, and 85 percent of the foods and drinks in the supermarket are acidic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's very hard in today's world when we're getting all of our food from those places, mm -hmm. other than maybe, you know, the one sixteenth of the little produce section that's yeah, in there, right. right, or maybe one sixty-fourth at this point, um, you know, because they sell so many other products. But, you know, basically the bottle waters and the things, if we're just talking strictly about water, even waters are acidic. So, yes, you know, people yeah. developing acid reflux and these kinds of things are from this acidic condition that's in the body. And I believe that it can simply be uh, reversed uh, just by creating something that is more alkaline. And, you know, not only uh, chemically, because everything's a chemical, water's mm -hmm. a chemical, right. food's a it chemical, is. It is. dirt's a chemical, mm -hmm. everything is a chemical. So we all try to be as chemical free as possible. We are chemicals. Um, however, um, in, in a healthy organic sense, uh, you want something that is natural. You don't mm -hmm. want something that is a chemical compound of right, sort right. that you can't pronounce or you know that you can't you don't know what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've just developed a habit of becoming a label looker, you know, and Me seeing too. right? But even on water. Flip it. 
I, yeah. See, this is the other thing. You know, people look for foods, they get to that point, but then they forget about water. Mm -hmm. And so what's in water? So they'll create a, a, a distilled or reverse osmosis mm -hmm. filtered water that is null and void of chemicals, uh, of minerals, mm -hmm. but then they put back in chemical compound minerals in the water to make it alkaline. Because let, let's face it, alkaline is becoming the new health thing trend to do. It so, is. I Actually, I was at the store and I did see at one of the major box companies, food box companies, their own private label alkaline. And you know what? A go. red flag went up in my head, which is, oh no, oh no, you kidding me? What have they got in this water? That's right, you know, it, it, it just, you know, but it, it's great, it's raising awareness in mm -hmm. one sense. Yeah. On the other sense, um, you know, uh, what it's doing to your body is not necessarily the, the best thing. I mean, we have doctors in the town to talk about the physiology of, of uh, drinking a chemically uh, induced, um, non-organic chemical uh, mineralized water mm -hmm. uh, versus a electrically changed water right. that becomes alkaline uh, electrically. Uh, in the in the differing effects because you know a lot of times when I uh, talk to anyone in the medical field they say hey listen you can't be too alkaline either and, and I agree with I, them completely. I totally. Mm -hmm. You know you can go into alkalosis mm -hmm. just as easily as you can go into acidosis. Acidosis. Mm -hmm. So you know that's why we're not drinking bleach or any of these kinds of yes. things because they're such high alkaline. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, the, the, you know, there's a lot of things out there, a lot of information and you, that you have to sift through. And I'm just grateful that I've been able to, you know, come across all this stuff and kind of piece all the puzzles mm -hmm. together, you know, pieces of the puzzle together. Um, we know that we need clean water, um, free, near, you know, free and clear of chemicals, but then, you know, a water that can even be more healthy. Now, mm -hmm. everyone's always asking, how can water be more healthy, right? Um, but it can, you know, they're, they're, not only do you filter it and make it, uh, keep the minerals in when mm -hmm. it, through the filtration process um, uh, of different differing media mm -hmm. uh, that it runs through. No different than the earth. That's what right. the earth does mm -hmm. as it runs through geology and media and dirt, soils, picks up different things. So you do the same kind of process for that and filtration. That's no different in our municipal municipal waters. Right. However, um, you know the crisis that we've been having, the issues that we've been having, while we're on the alkalinity and acidic uh, thing here is that in like Flint, Michigan, for example, the reason they have lead in the water is not because there's lead pipes per se. Okay. Okay. It is because the water that was running through the lead pipes was acidic. Whoa. So it So it, it corroded Correct. the lead and that's why you have Correct. lead that's right. in the water. That's right. So, oh my gosh. So, you know, I, I mean. Bingo, I didn't even make that connection. And again, I'm not there to test it, mm -hmm. to see what it was a, a, on a daily basis, but this is why many municipalities add high alkaline chemicals into the water mm -hmm. in, in order to bring up the alkalinity mm -hmm. of the water to be neutral or slightly alkaline. Now that's federally mandated and regulated to be that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, t for to see these things kind of happening here and there around, you know, in different municipalities, small cities and things like that. I heard of another one in Mississippi, okay. um, maybe Jackson, um, if I'm not, uh, if I'm correct, uh, pardon me, but uh, you know, that, that it's happening in many, many others. I also read a CNN article recently that 5,300 different municipalities have higher levels of lead than what's acceptable. Because of the acid in the water. I believe it's just too oh, acidic yeah. and that they're not d get putting enough in it and people are saying, well, Thank God we're not, you know, we're not getting the chemicals. Yeah, well, you know, it's corroding the pipes. And so what comes first, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't mind that the chemicals are in there to raise the pH so that I can get water, mm -hmm. thankfully, at my home, mm -hmm. um, you know, right at the comfort of my home. However, um, you can then get, filter that. Then at that point, when the municipal water comes to you, then at that point, it's your responsibility to filter it yourself again. Because see, these systems, you know, take the Ohio River, for example, there's a lot of water coming through that river, right down that river. Yes, there so is. if we're going to drink that and provide that to a whole entire city of, you know, a uh, you know, tri-state area of 3.5 mm -hmm. million, let's say, well, there's yeah. got, that's a lot of water that has to go through a system. Right. So, you know, I, I am grateful that the municipal water is right. as good as it is to get to me, right. number one. Um, number two, I mean, I probably wouldn't be saying the same thing if I lived in Flint, Michigan, honestly, <laughs> you know, because they no. weren't doing 
per se their mm -mm, job if, no. if the water was becoming acidic like that and rusting the pipes. Mm -hmm. Mine's not, and I know we have lead pipes in the old infrastructure of yeah. downtown Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. So Tuscaline area, et I know we do. Yeah, we um, do. And, and in fact, um, you know, I can taste the differences in the waters and mm -hmm. things like that. I know it's not good. So I pretty much say, you know what? I used to be a bottled water drinker, a spring water bottle drinker, mm -hmm. and and I just you know start filtering my own and creating my own spring water in my own home. Okay. Right. Uh, because I'm doing nothing different. If you go to like a uh, supermarket where they're, uh, you can go and buy water from them, and I mean fill your own mm -hmm. water. If you go behind the yes, facade, please tell me. If you go behind the facade, you can see that they have just a little cartridge filter back there that's filtering the water that's on a line coming from your municipal water. So it says glacier water. It says all but. the things that you want it to come from. Mm -hmm. um, but if you reveal, you know, behind the curtain, kind of you'll get to see that it's just a filtration device that honestly you're overpaying for and you can actually pay less for in your home. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. You, oh God. I will not be a cynic. I will not be a cynic, but it's hard. So the answer, the takeaway is that you need to have and I need to know if it's available. You need, well, it must be because you're here. Sure. Um, is to have your own alkaline filtration system. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's real super easy. Yeah, the, the best thing, you know, people can get it for a home or for a business. You know, mm -hmm. there are many, many companies out there. I'm just one of many. Mm -hmm. um, we all do a good job. So, you know, for you to get something in your home that is a, a tank, a small tank of sort, they could be point of use under the counter or down in a basement. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are getting these softened water systems because we do have a, a problem with hard water mm -hmm. in terms of our uh, in terms of our um, appliances. Mm -hmm. And and that's one thing that's great. However, that's not a water that you really actively want to consume. So you can hook something if you do need a softener. You do want a softener. Hook it up to a line that's not going to be on your drinking water. Make sure your drinking water is separate from that. From so the that, water softener. Yeah, so that you're not ingesting oh, the chemicals from, that you're putting in every mm -hmm. month to the, right. the tank. Right. You know, and, and so you know that's one thing I'll say. The other thing is, is it's very simple for you to create an incredible water either, like I said, right at your sink, under mm -hmm. your sink, with a filter, a filtration device. And I, I would, I uh, sell many different devices. I sell RO devices. You just, I just don't recommend them. Uh, okay. Because they create that acidic water. So well, I'm not interested in anything. Like, but you bring up a that's point, right. and I've, I've got a red flag because I do have, on my water line, because of the hardness of the water in Southern Ohio, yes. I have a water softener. Sure. A big one. Many people do. And, I, and I'm now, now you're telling me new information. Yes. So, and I love my water softener because it cleans my clothes. That's right. I don't need any uh, cleaning, cleaning enhancers. Less is more. Yeah. Uh, water's the ultimate cleaner anyway. And I've always had a red flag about drinking this water, so I don't drink it, but I do shower, which is absorbing into my skin. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, it does. I mean, your skin is an organ and that's water. So just for my situation, I need to reconnect my water softener into just the washer and dryer and kitchen. I mean, does yes. your alkaline <laughs> system work Most with a people, water softener? Yeah, less so, okay, um, because of the chemicals that oh, is being God. put into the water. So, okay. so this is the thing, uh, you know, you can read simply, most people get their, their, uh, their salts and things and potassium and things like that from, you know, a Home Depot or mm -hmm, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's simple. You can read the ingredients on there to see what it is and then you can Google it if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but, the, but the key is, 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 you know, I don't even use a softener in my, in mm, my home okay. uh, only because I use a massive filter that I can also reduce the level of calcium or hardness of the water just through to, filtration, to, okay. not even with a softening system. Um, That's you know, amazing. You can actually do that? You can, yeah. Yeah, with, with enough, with a, the size of the tank. The tank has to be substantial enough right. in order to have enough media in it uh, in order to do so, but you absolutely can reduce that and oh still my protect God. Well, your we'll skin, talk about this off, off air because <laughs> I thought I was doing a bright thing, 
Uh, and it's I'm just right. telling you, Amer I mean, people, you, you, you try to aim hard and you try to aim right. Um, and, and again, you've given me information I did not have. And so now here we are. Well, and that's the thing, you know, uh, hard water is very much prevalent. Yeah. Um, and people have made great businesses on water softening because, in fact, it does protect your appliances. You it know, will if you're going to put that in at, you know, a certain price point and then, you know, your hot water heater is double that price mm -hmm. point, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're going to want to go with something like that so mm -hmm. it protects your hot water heater. Period. I get it. You know, but uh, in terms of healthful water right. and drinking and creating healthful water, uh, a, a filtration of just pure water and null and void of the chemicals, and then we create, um, uh, we, we also have been studying a device that is a medical device uh, used over in Japan, and it basically does create an electrified, alkalized water. So I used to think it was just alkaline, right? It was okay. just creating an alkaline state. Well, alkaline is a chemical change. Alkalized is actually an electrical change in the body. Mm. So it's not um, doing anything bad because if you have high levels of calcium that's coming into your body, it's, it can actually have a ill effect right. uh, on your digestive tract and mm -hmm. things like that. It can build up in the heart, it can yeah, build up in different yeah. places and, um, and create bad things to happen. But a electrical change in the water, no different when lightning strikes the earth mm -hmm. 22 times per second and electrifies the water that's in it, that's why you don't want to be outside <laughs> in the water in an electrical storm, <laughs> you know, because it electrifies that water uh, just the same. It's called disassociation of water. And so we have a device that actually electrically strikes the water and creates that disassociation in the water so it makes it even more healthful to drink. Wow. So it's an alkaline system that is electri electrified as well. Yes, it's it's the the process. If one was to look it up on you know in the, in the medical field on PubMed.gov, is actually electrolyzed reduced water. And what is the impact upon ingestion when you take it in? Well, you know, many many different things. There, are, you know, it, it seems as though uh, you know lots of my own personal issues. Greater amounts of energy, right? If mm -hmm. if our body is a, a, an el electrical being, and it right? is, that's our nervous system. It that's is nothing but electricity. Then we need to take in things that give us electricity, right, and give us something that's yes. alive. Mm -hmm. So uh, fruits and vegetables have that electricity mm -hmm. to them. They do. They based do based on the umbilical mm -hmm. cord that you're separating it from. And then water is the same way because it's being electrically charged by lightning. So as it comes across the earth, now as it sits in a pool of standing water, it's going to have less of an electrical charge than if it were running over, mm -hmm. you know, in a thinner yeah, stream, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. crashing over rocks and in the mountains. Um, and so, you know, I have tested, all this device does is recreate the life in the water. Mm. And I was in uh, Denver over uh, Christmas of last, uh, this past year. And uh, we were up in the mountains and we went to this guy's ranch and we can actually test electricity in the water with yes. a oxidation reduction potential meter, an ORP meter, and you measure it simply in millivolts. And you're looking for a negative charge in any liquid. Okay. And so we went and tested this guy's water up in the mountains, mountains. and how was it ranch. how was it it was actually negative negative 400 which is really good on the scale if you have you know negative 800 mm -hmm. zero and then positive mm -hmm. 800 mm -hmm. which most between zero and positive 800 is where most other liquids stand out mm -hmm. there um, and the negative uh, it was negative 400 it was amazing our devices create even higher but you know it, it's literally like we are recreating that electrical shock into mm -hmm. the water uh, no different than if someone's dying and they need to be brought right, back to right, life, right. Uh, they're shocking them back to life, right? right. So this is not a shocking you, <laughs> right, like that. It's not going to hurt you. Right. It's a daily thing. I've been drinking it for five to six years now, mm -hmm. and it's a daily thing that little it, bits of it, so you get greater amounts of energy. Um, I've well, experienced, I will say to you, I don't know, how old are you? So I'm 35. You look great. I feel great. I'm serious. You look, you look great because my concern is as I look out amongst humans and it's starting even younger because your generation was exposed to toxic eating earlier. Yes. And I mean, you know, it, it's rough. It shows on the face. Hey, it definitely does. You know, I'm glad I stopped when I did because um, I pretty much stopped, uh, you know, in high school. I did come you know, it was like that, uh, 
I grew up in a family where we did eat in mm -hmm. more than we ate out. Good. So uh, we did kind of have that foundation to a certain extent so that, you know, but I still ate some junk food and I, you know, I was an only child. So I was home making for myself. Okay. So I was responsible for myself. So I didn't always make the right decisions, <laughs> okay, that's um, okay. you know, because uh, I didn't have uh, someone there to watch me every step of the way. However, you know, after about high school and then college, I really, I mean, that was the complete change. You know, when, when you have to fully be responsible for yourself, mm -hmm. um, like everyone out there, um, you know, th that's the most important thing is that you're really making those choices on a daily basis that is setting you up because every little day is going to build to a bigger day, right? right a bigger, right, a, a year right, and then right. years. And so, you know, if you're doing things that are, um, you know, unfortunately not giving nutrients and, and minerals and things to your body, then it's taking away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, it, actually every acidic drink that one takes, their blood has to be 7.365. We're getting back to the alkalinity thing here and it's bringing their body into acidity, their blood into acidity mm. for that moment. So the blood actually has to remain 7.365. So it steals calcium minerals from somewhere else in to order try to, to keep, get it there. It has to keep it there. Oh my God. So if our blood is not, you know, in the homeostasis state, we're not gonna be healthy. Our body would not be mm -hmm. able to sustain all the junk that we put in it. So that's why we're actually sacrificing the calcium out of our bones and other kinds of mm -hmm. things every time we eat and drink acidic things that extreme. And that's why you find a lot of doctors recommending for older people calcium. Yeah. Because they've stripped it. Right. They've stripped it and they have now dealing with uh, osteoarthritis and osteoporosis and arthritis, all of that because calcium has been stripped over time to keep your body alkaline. Am I correct? That's, that's correct. Yeah. Oh my God. You keep your pH there. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> is this stupid? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, this is counterintuitive. This is dumb. It's just not, just, we're mm -hmm. just not educated for the most I, part. I know we're it. not. And, but it has to, there has to be a real commitment because as I share with people, they say, why would you as a money lady focus on health? And I said, because <laughs> it doesn't matter about money if you're dead. <laughs> It doesn't matter about how much money you have if you're spending a ton of money on doctors and, and medical sustenance uh, situations, and, and it doesn't matter. My, my job is, is, is worthless if you are committed to being sick. And most people aren't committed to being sick, but they do things to make themselves sick, right. and therefore the money they've accumulated is depleted paying medical bills and Absolutely. paying for care and, and it, it's it's just a, a, a just a sickening cycle and and that's why I am just for you viewers that want to know why I'm on this subject because you I can't help you if you are sick I can't help you if your lifestyle that you have developed is so contra intuitive to your wanting to live so that is why I have uh, Tomas on today, because until you deal with the fundamentals, and hear me well, it doesn't matter how big of a car you drive, it doesn't matter how well you dress, it doesn't matter about externals when on the inside you've got a time bomb ticking. And I can speak to this because as I approach 65, I consider myself a health nut, kind of nerdy, because I am, um, but because I have looked around over the years and what I see is very, very sorrowful, okay? I see women that are obese. I see men that are obese. I see people that are in poor health. And again, it, I can't help you to accumulate wealth if you're gonna be busily paying out to doctors and health uh, circumstances. I can't, I can't do anything with that. So we're going to go back to the basics. And, and again, the basics start with water. When you say water start, it's first. Yeah, I yeah, mean, first. It, sh it should be number one. You know, I, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the, you can only really go about three days without water before cellular degeneration right. begins to happen. Mm -hmm. So, Unlike you know, food. it's not going to kill you right, right away that you don't have water in three days, obviously, right? That's the response that I get off the uh -huh. cuff, the response, cynical response I get from people. But I just tell them, I said, you know, it's, it's simple. Your cells are, 
even more water than we claim that our body is. Mm -hmm. So some would argue that our cells are 99.9% .9 water. They're yeah, like a sponge they, they are. with nutrients mm -hmm. and things. So, you know, basically you're, you just want your cells to be duplicating correctly. So you want the proper things to be in there. So, um, you know, and that's why I believe that probably cancer is so uh, abundant and prevalent, you know, prevalent actually is mm -hmm. because, um, you know, it, it, the cells are duplicating themselves in erratic in ways, you know, they're duplicating the imbalances and the, yeah. and, uh, the, uh, the, you know, basically not looking like they should, you know, and, and they're not mm -hmm. taking in the things that they should. So, you know, it starts with water. It definitely starts with water. And then food, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can go 40 something days without having food without, you know, nutrients. You can eat from a box your entire life. That's fine. But just know that cellular degeneration is, is occurring. Right. Um, and then, and then, uh, so water is the most uh, prevalent thing in our lives. We are water beings. Um, we are. And, and, and we absolutely need that. And we need, a, uh, you know, you brought up a good point in terms of why am I talking about health in terms of money. Well, money is an uh, is a, is a energy issue. Yes, okay? it is. So if you don't have, if you're sick and you're in bed, you don't have the energy to get up out of bed and go do something. Right. So if you can drink simply, drink a water, let's say that you're not going to, it's going to be really hard for you to change your diet. Um, that's why we offer the things that we do because we educate people on getting that energy back first mm -hmm. so that they have the energy. And if it's as simple as something just as drinking water, you know, more people are going to be likely to start there and right. work there and then they can start working on the other things. So yes, money, making money is an energetic issue. I totally agree. Give us a, your phone number because time's wrapped up. Excellent. Great, guys. Thanks. Um, my number is 513-509-1214. Four, one. And you are our water expert and the one particular um, product that uh, has kind of shaken this country, it changed Japan, but it's shaking the United States that you were involved in is, is what's the name of the company? It's actually Enagic. Enagic? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Kangen Water. Okay. All yes. right. And people can learn about that. I was introduced to that product. Before it was even in the United States, one of my mentors, Dr. Shasky, was a oncologist uh, under uh, Harry Truman, and he was assigned to Japan to set up the health clinics in his youth, and he did that. And one of the things he did was deal with radioactivity with oh, okay. that alkaline water. So I, uh, he told me, if it ever comes to the U.S., get to it, Michelle. And so I was just honored and delighted to meet you at that time because this was a product I was very much aware of and it changed Japan. It totally changed Japan after World War II. Yeah. And it can change, for those of you that are watching today, it can change your life today. We are out of time. I wanna wrap up and just thank you again for being a part of my world on the power of money and I hope you've enjoyed uh, Mr. Engelhart and his uh, explanation of water and why it's so important and again give him a call uh, he is the expert he's your go-to person and in closing out today's session I wish you love I wish you peace and I wish you and your families joy see you next time God bless mm -hmm.